All right, what's up everybody? Dave here, Stands Everything Again, working on my 1951 GMC project, AKA the SIE GMC or Project Y Weight. And today what I'm gonna be doing is working on my tailgate. So my tailgate has obviously not been there for a while now. Um, right when I dragged the bed from my backyard, the first thing I noticed was that the tailgate was crooked and it bothered the heck out of me. So I went to fix it and it turned out to be a lot more involved than I thought. So I'm gonna show you what I'm dealing with. This is the original hinge that I had and you can see that it's kind of buckled. Um, in there. Um, so basically that buckle was preventing it from sitting straight. You can actually see that it's a little bit cockeyed right there. So I went to buy new hinges. I grabbed these from Bill's truck shop. And when I went to buy new hinges, I said, hey Bill, I need new hinges and I need this piece as well, which I thought was a bushing for the hinge. It is not. It is actually supposed to stay in the bed and the hinge rotates inside of it um, like that. And that's what kind of gives it uh, the rotation. What was happening with this one particularly is it was all bent out of shape and it won't rotate. So the bed was not opening, uh, or sorry, the tailgate was not opening well at all. Um, so that went into, oop, I got one in there. So this went into here and then uh, it stuck and it was in a bind. Unfortunately, I can't get this off of it. Um, so that's what we're gonna start to do today, is to try and get this off, and then we're gonna scrap that hinge and use this new hinge to get the bed going. Hopefully, um, all I have to do is get this off of here somehow, straighten it out a little bit. It is a little bit gnarly and not great. Uh, and then just weld these two pieces to the end of the tailgate here, and then slap the tailgate back on and we'll be done. Hopefully, that is a ideal case situation, but I think I'm gonna end up having to uh, fiddle with this quite a bit. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna jam this in the vise and I'm gonna try and get this off of here. Um, as always, I'm gonna put the tr camera on the tripod so you guys can come along with me and we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Okay, so that actually wasn't as bad as I thought. I did get that piece out here. Um, you can see this hinge though is, uh, it's definitely seen better days. It's kind of ovalized and sort of bent as well. So that would really explain why uh, it wasn't rotating in here. If I'm gonna grab this new hinge here, put it in this, it does not fit because this is all mangled. So what I'm gonna have to do is kind of open this up, figure out a way to make this round again, which might be a little bit of a bit of a thing. Let me take this off actually. Uh, with this off, you can see that this isn't really round anymore. Um, so that is the bad one. And this is the good one, even though the good one should be attached to that. So what I'm gonna have to try and do is uh, kind of get this back to being round so that it goes onto uh, the end of this hinge nicely and everything can rotate. Not really sure the best way to do that. Maybe I'll find something else that's kind of round and solid and just jam it in there and try and bend this back. It is gonna involve the vise again. So yeah, let's put this in the vise and see what I can do. Okay, so I know a bad idea when I have one and this is probably a bad idea. What I'm gonna try and do is use this socket here as kind of a form to try and get this back into a round shape. Uh, what will probably end up happening is this will get stuck to that and it'll suck. But let's see what happens. Okay, so we're definitely better. It's not going on all the way though. Uh, this one definitely goes on like a glove here, whereas this one gets a little bit tight near the end. I can actually see where it's, it's dented in there, so I need to figure out a way to knock that out. Hmm. Try the old soccer trick again.
So after that second round, we are better. It does go in. It still doesn't go in quite all the way though. And I think that has to do with, there's a dent right there, which I can't really get in there to get out. Um, so I think what I might do, and you can really see it there. It's just, just pretty, uh, pretty dented and oblong. Um, I think even if I put it in there and try to yank it, I don't think that will get it out. Uh, I think that would just kind of cave in the other side. So, hmm, I might actually just try and ream out the inside of here, see if I can get it thin enough to sort of push it back straight. And then if need be, I can re-weld it and then grind it down. But uh, that's gonna be my next approach. So I'm gonna grab my Dremel and just Dremel in there, see if I can get this moving in nicely and then uh, stick it back in the bed. Okay, so we've made some progress. This is the original factory one that wasn't messed up. This is the one that was Ooh. messed up. You can see that I did Dremel through the side here. I can clean this up a little bit, but I'm actually probably not gonna weld it because I'm worried that if I weld it, I'll just get material on the inside and sort of be right back where I started. But I do have good news. This one fits really great on the reproduction hinge. Of course, now it's not gonna go on. It goes all the way on the reproduction hinge. And then this one, uh, it doesn't fit all the way on the reproduction hinge. It does fit pretty well, uh, but not all the way on. It does work really well on the original hinge. See how it, it's on there, it's spinning, it's great. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna clean this out, clean this up a little bit, make sure that everything's all kosher for the two of these to mate, and then these two are gonna become friends, and then the other one and the new hinge are going to become friends. everything uh, cleaned up a little bit to put this back together and I'm actually gonna dry fit it first before I weld it just to make sure that everything's working out as I expected so as I had mentioned this one is going to go on to this here and then I am going to put the hinge back on this side and then put this on and bolt it all together so I'm gonna put the tripod uh, somewhere where you can watch me work and then hopefully uh, this this ends up working out <music> back out in the garage and I have to say the audio and video in this part might be a little bit different because we had a little bit of technical difficulties with my other camera that technical difficulty being I forgot to charge it so I'm using an old phone uh, we've got a real professional operation out here anyway um, where we left off last was fixing uh, these these hinges here or this area of the hinge on uh, my bed and getting the tailgate back on. So that is back in place now. Um, I've got it back on in both sides. Uh, this is obviously the reproduction hinge over here with the original sort of bushing thing in place. It all seems to be working pretty well. And you can see here how uh, this would have been too small to sort of fit into here. And I've got this put in here now and I have the one on the other side where we ended up with the reproduction hinge and the original sort of bushing thing. These were the things that I couldn't find to replace. Uh, and it does sit rather straight now, much straighter than it did before. I kind of wish I had a picture of it before so I could show you what it looked like, but just trust me, it wasn't straight before and it was really crooked. Um, and the tailgate does open, but I have these weird sort of farmer locks in here. And the idea is that you pull this down and it unlocks it and the tailgate opens. You can see that this is a little bit bent, so it's kind of binding right here. But if I show you on this side, you can see that there's a little sort of knob in there. You pull this down, it opens up. That way it locks it. Again, it's bent and uh, 
it should go in there a little bit more. So this is actually, this one works pretty well, like that's open. This one, because it's a little bit damaged here, uh, it doesn't want to open. So what I'm actually going to do, I am going to open the Derek's tailgate. I'm going to butts with it, put the camera down. Uh, you'll see me messing with it. Get these open, try and straighten this out a little bit. Straighten it out a little bit here and see if we can't get this tailgate opening nicely. And then I'm actually probably, I said I was going to weld these in, um, but everything seems to be working so well right now. I'm kind of worried that if I weld this, I'm gonna get a little bit of binding. So I'm probably actually going to take this hinge off because this bolt is in backwards. Uh, take this all off, lube it up, and then jam it back together after I get these locks working and then sort of call this uh, a wrap for this video once this gate opens, but we'll see how I feel once I get everything working. So let me put the camera on the tripod and then we can get to work getting this opening and closing and see where we end up. on either end and now I'm going to test out this and see if I can get this to open smoothly get it back closed again and just uh, make sure that this is all working uh, the way that I want it to so that's down without this block of wood this will actually hinge all the way 180 as they do from the factory without any sort of chains in place I am probably going to add some chains I just haven't really figured out how I want to do it yet or what kind of chain I want to use. That's a real minor detail that I can do down the road pretty much at any time. Um, so now that this is down, I'm going to swing it back up and see if these will work for me and lock this back into place. Okay, so I have swung it back up, locked this back into place. It's actually solid enough that I could rip it right off the jack stands if I wanted to. Even if I hold on to the bed here and give it a good brief, uh, it is holding on pretty good. I am still going to put something in here just in case, a safety precaution, so this thing doesn't swing down when I'm driving around, you know, dragging bumper and whatever, but I'm pretty happy with how this is fitting. Uh, so the last thing I have to do is get some new bolts into these hinges. I am, as I mentioned before, I'm actually not going to weld those uh, bushings into place. I think things are working pretty well that I don't have to do that. But I do have to change these uh, hinge bolts because I don't like them and one of them is actually flipped around. So I'm going to grab the camera off the tripod and show you what I'm dealing with and what I'm talking about. We'll change those up and then we'll call this done for this video. So the last final thing I got to do in this video is just uh, replace this bolt here. Um, for anyone who's worked on these beds before, these are captive nuts and uh, mine all rusted out. To get these in, I've drilled everything out and uh, just nutted and bolted it. That does mean that there's a hole on the back side. I can show you what that looks like. So I did have to drill a hole on the back side here to gain access inside uh, to the nut and bolt for this side. Um, obviously that it wasn't the greatest thing in the world but it was really the only way I could do it. Um, and again, being a patina bed, I'm not too concerned about it. This around because I don't want the nut showing on the outside here. I just did that so that I could bang it together uh, pretty quickly. So I'm gonna flip this around, probably put in a longer nut here. Uh, and then once that is done, this video will be complete and uh, we've banged out another video and I can check another item off that list over there. got this bolted in now. I even found some old washers to toss on there for that nice patina look. Don't worry, I'm going to paint this all up so you won't even notice that this is new. This is all done now and I can call this repair complete for uh, this video, which is awesome. All right, so I have crossed off fixed tailgate hinge off of my list, and that means we can keep moving down with the next few things we need to get done before my truck does come back from Izzy Fab. So looking at the list, what I have left to do is I have to coat the passenger inner fender, uh, finish body working the passenger side fender, uh, straighten the bed, I'm gonna do that actually on the chassis, put some tubs in, a lot of body work left, uh, paint and patina the whole thing, mount the fenders, mount the welding, 
Uh, not the well thing, actually. Uh, there's a lot of stuff left to be done. Don't worry, um, there is a lot of winter left, thankfully. A lot more hours to be spent in the garage working on this truck and getting it back together. But for now, I'm actually gonna hop on a flight tomorrow night to head out to Peru for some BMX stuff that I'm doing. So this video is gonna go up tomorrow, um, probably before I fly out, and then I'm going to land again, kind of back in Ontario next week. And we're probably gonna do another remote control car video just for me to get caught back up and then back out in the garage working on this bed. I do have to, um, you know, get back to doing body work on this side of the bed. So yes, I have been procrastinating from doing that. Uh, like I said before, I've been doing a lot of body work and I'm a little bit tired of sanding, but uh, it's something I really have to get back to. Um, with it being a little bit colder now in the garage, it's actually perfect sanding weather because um, you can just get sanding, make yourself warm, but not too hot while you're doing it. So I am gonna get back to that and then wait for a plus temperature day to put the primer and the guide coat back on and then we can finally call this bed pretty much ready to mount before we get to the tubs. Um, so once again, thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you think of this video. Give me a like and a subscribe and a share. And I'm going to keep hitting you guys with more videos throughout the winter. So thanks again and we'll see you in the next one.